Меня зовут Стэн. Я не говорю по-русски. So, as you saw before, I'm wondering how many of you are dealing or connecting somehow with the concrete or precast concrete. Can you show? Okay, thank you. Спасибо. Nice to see. And uh, I really like concrete and uh, I'm today here to show uh, or present a bit about uh, precast concrete more and uh, how this fabrication can be automated. Uh, first of all, of course it's connected with Tegla and, and first of all I want to say that Tegla is not for only for automation. We can really, really give the value of both cases if you are not doing non-automated -non or you are doing automated um, fabrication. But as Ernest has asked me to show us a little bit uh, like the more advanced then optimization part is the one that I try to focus today. So, as we saw in the morning already, um, usually we start with architectural design. There are quite many different, uh, different softwares with who we can collaborate and, and as you already heard from Ernestas, we are really open BIM and, and we collaborate with different um, architectural softwares also as usually we get the information at the beginning from the architecture, from the architecture part. Then we are going to the, comes the structural design. Um, I couldn't think something better than Tecla structures here. And uh, with structural design, there is all, also connected the uh, uh, different analyses and calculations. And we saw a really nice demonstration from uh, Arvidas how we connect with uh, Lubal. And, but there are also different other softwares like uh, Stark, Robot, Skia, Fem, Strusoft, Sub, the, and we can cooperate with, with them all to do the calculations. And now we have Tecla structure, so uh, Tecla design also that's for uh, for doing the calculations. If you're interested. Then if we are going forward, then we have to manufacture it or fabricate these uh, precast elements. Uh, like I said, it can be manual way, it can be automated way or semi-automated way. And uh, there are quite many different uh, softwares that I will introduce you later. And finally, there is storage delivery and installation part that's really important also in our uh, precast workflow. And all these are connected with the enterprise resource planning. Uh, it's for the uh, to use different softwares to plan, organize, optimize your workflow and resource better. And uh, later, I think uh, my colleague uh, Sampo will give a demonstration also about our Vigo project software. So. Here you can see we have covered all quite many different connections who we are working with and last time when I checked how many different softwares there are that AutoCAD, uh, sorry, Tecla structures can co-work and uh, there were more than 120 different softwares so in whole of, uh, workflow so it's really open BIM and we collaborate with a lot of different softwares. Today I will talk a little bit only about the structural design that you have the already demonstrations. I will not stay there for a long time and uh, really, really some couple of slides for the storage delivery installation also. But my main focus today will be about the um, production and especially for the uh, automated production. So if we start with structural design, then usually uh, we start with conceptual design. Um, I did a small video that it goes really fast in Tecla structures to just build up the elements 
in, in the model. And I know a lot of companies already. I was a structural engineer before going to coming to work in Tecla structures, and there were quite many companies who gave us only to ask this conceptual design because they can get the quantities, they have the elements there. It's perfect for the um, fitting phase. And one of like this kind of project, I would do maybe with two or maximum three days. Um, like you know already, every this element here has inside a lot of information, like what's the weight, what's the name, profile, uh, length, which are the elements, what rebars they have, what embeds, all the information is every every element or precast element has all this information. And it's really useful later on to, when we can use it. And that's why, for example, we have this organizer where all the information is really well organized. Here we can see the different parts. For example, the office part is one part of the uh, building and the another part is fabric, uh, factory part. Also with different cast unit elements, beams, walls, whatever elements we can do ourselves rules also. Here we can see the, uh, we can divide for example with weight and once we select the, for example, factory second floor, show the all the elements that weigh more than 12 tons because our maybe the limits of transportation and we can visually right, right away see which are the elements that are heavier than 12 tons. It can be with statuses, uh, materials, all kind, every kind of information you want to select out, you want to show visually, you can do it. And as you saw before, uh, with steel there was the welding with different colors. We can do also like, all these different weight categories have different colors and you can see automatically what we are talking about, where are problems was the situation of modeling. Uh, so for the conceptual design, the most important is we can model really fast, like I said, maybe half week, smaller, smaller projects. Then once we model, there's only one guy who models in the company normally, and all other people in the company don't have to spend time for, for uh, seeing or understanding the project. And this one guy who models at the first, the old the conceptual model, he can see these different alternatives and uh, uh, different options how we can present for our uh, customer better the, these uh, projects because we want to at first we want to win the project, uh, so we want to show them our proposal, and uh, also we can notice quite easily if we have prob problematic uh, situations or some some special locations from the 3D model it's really easy to notice this right away it's not the 2D drawings that takes time and once the one guy has modeled this the conceptual design everybody in the project, everybody in your company and outside of company can understand what's going on with the project really easy and quickly then one really really important is also about planning and logistics, as we all know, the better you do the planning at early stage of the project, the better it goes later phase. And uh, uh, Marguchi and I will have the presentation today, and they are doing a really good job with planning side. Uh, as I told, we have all, all the information and one of the really important uh, benefit that all our clients like is the especially the quantity takeoffs. If we get the really accurate quantity takeoffs, we know can calculate what's the cost of our project and then do the right um, right uh, like um, offer to our client. Because if we say too high price, then we don't win the project. If we say too low price, then we don't get profit. So it's really important in the early stage to have correct quantities and say offer the right price for the project, so it reduces the risks and, and it's everything under control. And like I mentioned already, when you're going to a client then it's really good and visual way to show, like this screen, you show the with beam, feed, uh, beam site for example, what, what is your offering. Sometimes 
I'm from the precast side, and then the precast company is going to the uh, customers who want to do cast in place, and they're saying, oh, we have a lot of better, uh, much better solution here with precast, for example, and they convince the clients to use precast because it's a nice visual way and the arguments are really clear. So it's really powerful selling tool also. Later on, as you can see, this is the conceptual design. We don't have any connections or nothing. It's really roughly and quickly done. But once the technical structures is really like useful and, and you have seen uh, we need, especially with the uh, automated production, we need detailing and connections. And here you can see a small demo how we use this same uh, components catalog. We just select which tools we want to use. There are different parametrics that you can change. And as you saw before, once you change the parametrics, uh, all the changes are done in, in the model. You just select the elements and uh, the, the components so the, these connections will be done quite really easy and quickly. And also adding the embeds, for example, like here the uh, steel plate, it's so intuitive, so it, it attaches automatically to all the surfaces. You can rotate it, move it everywhere. Basically, it's really, really easy and fast way to to place the different embeds. I will leave it forward here. And there, there, there are all kinds of different uh, elements, for example, lifting anchors. For different elements, we need different lifting anchors, and you don't have to do the settings every time. Again and again, you just say the settings, for example, for columns 1 settings, for beam 1 settings. You can say also for heavy beams, you want to use some kind of uh, lifting anchors, and lighter beams, you want to use the smaller anchors. Uh, so you don't have to do it every time. You do only once in your company, and then you just use it really easily. Click the elements where you want to use it, and as you can see, the reinforcement comes also with just a couple of clicks. You can also select the component, then select all the elements you want to use it, and with one, one go you get for the all the elements the same reinforcement. <laughs> I think I will skip the so in the Okay, it's ending anyway, so you can see there are all the reinforcement with a couple of minutes we get all the reinforcement to the column beam, lifting numbers, uh, core belts, everything and, and the changes are really nice and easy to do. So you, you saw also this slide before, I want to mention only this, that the difference comes fr from the detailing size side. Once you, we want to do some changes, for example, change the location of this opening, then what it means? It means different things, it means that we have to change the rebars. Are they fitting anymore, these embeds? Are, are they fitting everything? So the small details are important uh, and we have all these different layout points, reinforcement embeds, all these detailing elements we have inside the model so it's accurate and, and constructible model actually. So what are the outputs that we can get from the model? Of course you know we can get this IFC model, 3D model, we share, can share it over internet, uh, Trimble Connect, um, BIM site that's for the free software for desktop computer, uh, for tablets, for mobile phones, however you want to share the 3D 
model so you want to send only one element or entire building you can share it quite easily and these are used both in construction sites and also in fabrication uh, factories then of course the different kind of reports that you saw already uh, for fabrication there is fabrication drawings also although we are still talking about automated way of uh, fabrication uh, right now still the drawings are needed and as you have seen today before the drawings are not we don't draw the drawings we generate the drawings so it comes automatically we don't have to spend much time there maybe some fine tuning only I believe personally that in the future we can less and less work with less and less drawings more with only the data exchange and then of course the erection drawings or installation drawings sections, plans, wherever you would need them so in the, in the design phase we can get the accurate and constructible models that are as, as built then uh, with this, uh, we have planned through and the models are accurate, then we have also much less conflicts and problems. And the problems come out not right away, they come usually in the, in the construction site. And then imagine there is the precast concrete, you have to put the walls, then come the hollow core slab, for example, then second floors. But then if there is some problem in the first phase, then you have to send these uh, panels back, ask the changes, the changes are done in the design phase, then they do the new new element in the factory and then it comes to the product, uh, the construction site. So what is the time and cost loss if there are problems and if you can uh, avoid these problems? And, and uh, again, all of our clients really appreciate this, these problems and, and Errors are really, really costly for it, for everybody for in the in the project, and it, it's one side is the money that we pay for these problems, and the other is also the time that we spend for that. So I don't wonder why, why the projects are always late in the end. Then the information always when we do anything in in the model, all the information is updated in database, in drawings, in reports, in the the information that we send out always the information is up to date and there is no conflict between drawings and models for example so we eliminate these and all the drawings are with the same information like i said the well planned uh, project is uh, and she ensures that uh, we will finish on, on on time and we don't go over time that's really important also so let's go on to the computer aided manufacturing part that's really interesting. So, in precast site, we have three different types of factories. Basically, the first one are cut and bend rebars, where we have rebars. The second one are uh, different wall panels, half slabs, and mesh bars also. And the third bar is, for example, holocaust. And all they are different. But they have one common thing and one misunderstanding that a lot of our clients understand. They think that our tech life formation goes directly to the machinery. No. There is this master computer always between. So actually I want to remember that Tecla will talk or communicate with this computer in factory and this factory will uh, produce the elements. So let's start with rebars. We have quite many rebars, and um, the first one are cut and made rebars. These are the normal ones that you have seen everywhere. Then there are different stirrups, uh, ties, hoops, also meshes, standard meshes uh, that we can order custom meshes with different openings also bent meshes and uh, there, are, uh, there are even uh, gauges and uh, other reinforcement uh, elements some of the elements here 
are done with, with black color and some of them are with gray color. And to make it even more clear, I have underlined. These are the elements where we can use the auto, uh, automated fabrication. The other ones that are faded away, we can't use. Uh, the, um, we can't help with the, there is no automated fabrication. But with these ones, the straight rebars, bent uh, stirrups, meshes, and especially cool are the bent meshes, where the meshes are welded together. The mesh will come directly, and uh, the machine bends the mesh um, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, whatever. And, and I have seen how they can have this uh, rectangular shape of mesh that's basically um, a beam, uh, like reinforcement for a beam. So you don't have to put separate layer every every uh, bar. You, you do this with meshes, and so really interesting. So here are some examples of, of cotton bend rebar machines and some uh, machine providers. And how it basically works, it, it just automatically there comes the line of the of the bar of this uh, rebar, and it it, it will build uh, cotton cotton bend automatically. Quite, quite simple and straightforward process. These are the mesh welding machinery, as you can see here. There come a lot of different uh, mesh, main mesh bars, and the other bars are welded just um, on top of them. So, quite nice and automatic way also. Then there are cages that I told, but in this case there is heavy manual work is still needed as they, they fix the rebars manually up there, to the, like straight rebars they fix manually and then they do welding around the rebars manually or automatically, but still there is manual work needed and we can't send them. So how the traditional way of uh, cut and bend rebar manufacturing goes is that normally, as we know, we produce the drawings. Mm, I have done the engineering engineering job also, and, and usually we, we use calculator to uh, calculate all the length and, and the materials and, and do this uh, schedules of these uh, bar bending schedules manually. So. Let's be honest, I have done quite many mistakes with these calculations and they are not always really correct, but with Teclos structures, we can say all these uh, bar bending schedules up there in the corner are, are done automatically from the model and they are up to date and correct. So, in the old ways, we, we took the bar bending schedule out, then we go the same machine that we saw before and there is this master controller master controller where we type one by one in manually with our nice small fingers all the bending bars. Again, opportunity, this takes time and then there is uh, human errors also time to time. Then rest of that goes quite easily. You can see this, this machine also right here. The same machine is usually next to the uh, manufacturing machine, and uh, then we can get the rebar rebars nicely. Quite easy and straightforward. Oh, there is another option also to do the bar bending uh, manually. Not so common, but still place to place they are doing. So, what what would be more efficient way or the automatic way would be that once we have this model structure model with all this information in like we have, like we all know already then we can ex export uh, this bar bending schedule we, we don't type in uh, manually we export them we just select elements that we the bars we want to export we export and here we have these barcodes these barcodes are scanned in with scanner and Right again to this uh, master controller or this uh, machine, so and that will take care of the 
fabrication. So there is less human work in middle. It goes faster and there are less human errors also. There another way we can skip it and use it here. There is a national standard, or the standard BBBS format that is used for um, cut and bend rebars. So again, we, take the, we select the elements we want to export to the fabrication. We select export BBBS and then this file format goes with just USB stick or email, whatever way it goes to the machinery. And again, machinery takes care of everything. So think about that, how, how much we can uh, make it faster, more efficient, and how many mistakes we can uh, like reduce or um, eliminate them. And, and the benefits are even bigger when there are bigger companies and they are doing mass production. There are maybe five or ten different um, different um, construction sites, and all the construction sites or different projects are sending their information. So how can you handle there are a lot of information to handle for the big companies? And in this case, they all send their BBBS uh, file formats. They send it to a ERP softwares where the ERP control software will automatically um, optimize your production workflow. It looks which kind of uh, rebars or diameters we should do it together because it's reasonable to do, um, to create or um, produce, for example, with 10 millimeter diameter rebars together and then 8 millimeter diameter together, and later we send to the right and packages to the right construction site. So and later on it goes the same way. But the difference here is that we have this optimizing software between. It's especially good for uh, large, large um, fab fabricators who are dealing with many, many different uh, uh, projects at the same time. Here are some examples of these ERP systems. There's uh, LD system, then Arma Plus is a really famous one. Progress. As you can see here, they, they are offering different kind of uh, modules, as, as they call for doing different kind of steps there, but, but they are mostly all, once you send the information to their software, they, then they can uh, optimize and then um, make it more efficient. The same with progress. Snell has quite nice... It's possible to also draw your rebars in the Snell software, but as you can look, it's not that efficient or not so good like Tecla. And ASA has, for example, different bar list, shop scheduling, load tracking, uh, field pricing, delivery tickets, everything. So, from the rebar side, we have cut and bend reinforcement and meshes mainly. Um, comparing to other products, precast products, they are quite simple ones, straightforward with, with standard side workflow. There are not many ma different machines, it's, it's not very difficult, so it's easy to use or, or use the benefits. Um, like I said, there, there are not many different machines. The workflow is standardized, and uh, this is especially good for, for mass production, like I showed you, to optimize your, your production. Also, the multi project. And maybe to remember here is the, that uh, for cut and bend reinforcement, there, there is this BBDS file format, and the uh, Unitechnic format, file format is for the meshes to, for the mesh production. So if, if, we move, if we move on to the wall and floor slab production, then uh, we have the different solid uh, panels, both walls and floor, 
cross labs are down there, uh, sandwich walls, uh, um, don't mess it, uh, at least they call this um, steel walls also sandwich, but here we talk only concrete sandwich walls where this uh, inner layer, outer layer, and in between there is uh, insulation. Um, then the double walls without the insulation and half slabs, they are basically quite similar to these double walls, only one part, these uh, half slabs, they are placed on the ground and uh, like as a slab and then the concrete is pulled over and architectural panels of course. So in the production, I will go really quickly, there is the pallet circulation where the pallets are going around, where they produce these elements. Then there is the plotting, as steel had also the plotting, here we can see the, the plotters plot the uh, openings in different embeds, they can plot to the um, pallets. Also some, some companies use lasers, for example, to show where the different um, elements have to be placed. There are shuttering formwork robots who place the formwork and different placing robots for reinforcement to put manually or semi-automatic or automatic way different machines that place the meshes. Concrete uh, spreaders or that place the concrete, they, they really know how exactly how much concrete they need for the, each element. And then comes the smoothing smoothening and uh, curing camber and also once we have done we take them away with the uh, pallet turning and transportation and lifting transportation and here I have underlined also the, the machine so where we can use the automated way of, of production or where we can uh, import information so Quickly, in trans, uh, traditional way, we normally again have these 2D drawings that are going to the factory. Mm, these drawings, different workers try to understand what, what's going on there, as there are quite many steps, everybody has to read the drawings at first. Then they try to do the formwork, they measure with tapes, and um, after that they, they place the reinforcement to some uh, bendings try to put them together in, in, on the pallet, um, add the embeds for the, for the electrical tubes, for example, and then uh, pour the concrete, and finally manual smoothing. So, this is the, I have seen quite, quite many companies doing like that. There is nothing wrong, it, it works also, and with the club we can give the information also in these cases. And each worker will get only the information that's necessary for them. If you put too much information on or all the information to the drawings, then it's confusing and it's much more difficult to understand for the workers. But if you put only the necessary work uh, as necessary information for each drawing, then uh, it's much easier to read and, and understand what's going on. Uh, in automated way of wall panel production, there is Again, this tecla structure with, with information. We select the elements, uh, export the elements. In this case, we export with the uh, uh, Unitechnic file format or UXML file format now. Uh, that goes, again, like I said, this master controller or this master computer that reads the information and uh, then this uh, software will manage the, 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 the production and the fabrication. So again, we have this file format, really easy, efficient way, just select elements in the model, send the information out, information goes to uh, master computer, master computer will take care of a lot of part, uh, the processes in the production and we get the elements. Uh, Unitechnic file format, what is it? What, what it includes is uh, it has the shape of geometry, what's the element shape, then it has the information about the openings, recesses, um, all kind of reinforcement, the mesh bars, rebars that we have in there, 
all the embeds that we have modeled in uh, project or the piece that uh, how many pieces there are of certain elements and to which project they um, have to go and uh, also different uh, dates so all the needed information is in this and we can get to the production quite nicely and here are some softwares uh, CAM softwares, we call them CAM softwares they are, it's the computer aided manufacturing so they, they help uh, with our production and here we can see the different pallets that we have in the factory how they are working, what the process is, how they are going and uh, this is the view, we can switch on and off different layers which kind of information we want to see this is the information that goes to the production so quite easy, nice, you have only a couple of persons in the factory well automated factory, they are just checking that everything goes smoothly and, and nicely then the progress on side of the uni technic we have also uh, PXML file format, mm, but I can say Unitechnic is more famous and now Unitechnic comes with new format, uh, UXML file format, that's also for these wall panels. Here we can see the uh, palettes, different palettes down here, and how the, these uh, wall panels are placed, the different palettes in the uh, construction fabrication. Here again, Late 2000 is one uh, control software. We can see again this uh, formwork, how are the openings, everything are in, and, and then uh, the formwork is placed uh, automatically. So here I have one video also that I would like to show. SAA Engineering, the software company from Vienna. The handling, storage, this is quite an automated way of production, as you can see the production. Once we have information in, we can uh, the shuttering of the formula is placed automatically with the machines to the correct location. So as I mentioned, if you don't want to spend that much money, then you can just show with lasers where the formula has to be placed, and then manually the guys are doing and placing the formula. The plotting was workstations are ergonomically optimized. There are still some works that, that has to be done manually, unfortunately. The required reinforcement is prepared on special steel processing units and automatically placed on the pallet. So yeah, here we can see the meshes are placed automatically and the rest of the reinforcement should be done also in most of cases are done placed manually like you can see here but these processes have put already into this workflow so machines are doing their job and there is time for humans to place the manual reinforcement the concrete spreader enables accurate and fully automatic casting with charging augers and as you can see, no manual work and it puts exactly the right amount of the, takes the correct information from the from the that we sent out from the unit file and takes exactly the right amount of concrete to the palette. Quite interesting. There was the half slabs that are just only this one side, but for the double walls, it turns around the element and places on top of another element. Turning device lifted and turned 180 degrees. As you can see here, it is then lowered and connected to the second shell in the compacting process. The result is a smooth and air hole free surface concrete element. But then this is really automated way and, and, and not many factories are reaching that level of automation but as you can see there are quite many machines but still there is a good example that, that we can do. Then it goes to the curing chamber and, and later uh, it will be transported away but I will 
According to the status of the plan, does it not go forward here? So we have, in, in, with board panels and floor slabs, and also the double walls, uh, the elements are much more complex. As you saw with, with double walls, there are one layer of um, concrete, then there are reinforcement in the different embeds, in, then the come connecting reinforcement, then another layer, a lot of different different machinery are there, and, and, and the processes can be quite complex. Um, different machines. Uh, the best results we get when we standardize our product production, the more complicated or complicated elements we still do usually manually, but these uh, more standardized elements we can do automatically better, or the um, our benefits are bigger, and also the semi-automated and automated way. Um, the file formats that we communicate are the main the Unitechnic UXML and the PXML file formats for doing this kind of works. And uh, a lot of uh, benefits or um, good things come from the using the model data for production planning and organizing. So continuing with, with Holocaust production, for example, it goes quite similar way that the machinery is a little bit easier, there's bed cleaners, uh, then we have to pull the wires, extrude uh, or do the moldings. Here is the, there are different kind of uh, holocaust and, and for me it was surprising also that we have, can do the pre-stressed uh, beams for example with these extruders. Quite nice way, we, we do the same way as holocaust and then we just cut it uh, then there are plotters, it measures from the both ways, where is the location and then plots this, uh, where are the cuttings, where are lifting anchors, even we can put the number of the elements on, on the elements on the plot. And then the manual sawing. Stackers lifting, here you can see this uh, up there, the beams that are coming from the, from the uh, fabrication. And uh, unfortunately here, this is so straightforward work that, that here we can give the information only for the plotters, but the main benefits come somewhere else. So basically, again, we have these drawings, we read the drawings, then we measure with, with this measure tape, uh, use the spray for doing the markings, and then which holes we dig out. Like you can see here, it works also, but but using the, the automated ways, maybe we can do more efficiently. Uh, we have the BIM model again. We select elements, export them. In this case, there are ELI plan files or HMS files, usually. These go again to the CAM or computer aided manufacturing software. And uh, then it takes care of the fabrication. Simple as that, or the plotting part at least. Mm, what's the information that we can get sent with the, these uh, files to, to the production are the profile name, because the profiles are standardized and then the, they use these uh, machines or profiles according to the what's the profile selected. Uh, volume of the, of the elements for the concrete uh, plotting data. Uh, ID numbers, quantities, geometry, also embedded materials, lifting loops, uh, reinforcement, we have strands there usually. And uh, once it's ready, the, we can send the statuses back to the Tecla, Tecla also, so we can check the statuses, how it's going each step. And here we can see one, one software where we have this uh, uh, Holocaust bed, where are all the information, where, ha where are the cuts, lifting, uh, lifting anchor places, and then the different openings. It has been automatically divided, optimized in the best way to, for the production, so most optimal way with the and, and to take it together, the Holocaust is, we send only the plotting geometry, uh, 
processes are quite simple, standardized and uh, semi-automated way for doing this kind of production. We use the Eliplan and HMS file format. Uh, the Eliplan format, we can take the information status back to Tecla. And uh, more gains we can, as it's so straightforward, process then the most of the gains we can get from planning and management and logistics uh, with the enterprise resource planning uh, uh, software so from the production side that not so many gains or the benefits but from the planning side that we can get quite many gains so a couple of pictures of story delivery and installation quickly I go over some ERP systems uh, we can get the delivery sets, plan the sets, and then uh, set to the correct order. So if they have to do, go to the construction site, they are going smoothly. We know where, where are the elements. The elements we always like have keep keep my uh, an eye on what's the status is. Uh, print tickets uh, connect with ERP systems. Also, when, when truck is coming, then we can give out the bill, billing information right away as we can put the information of prices of the elements already in the cloud model, so we just send out the prices. And um, like it was said, collaboration with different parties, it, it will be improved. Installation part again, drafting and visualizing the uh, construction site, as you can see or have seen already. Then the installation should go according to the plan that we have done already and it's really easy to follow the plan if you have the visualization and the communication is better in this way. Uh, status model, statuses we have already and the communication. And to sum up quickly because we are in lack of time, uh, the production of the automated way is really good when we uh, for the production planning and optimizing our works and uh, especially if, if we use multi-level different uh, projects at the same time then it's really efficient. Uh, the information goes design software to the CAM software and then to the machinery. Uh, we get uh, the results our customers who are automated they say that we get faster with less errors that the workflow and the quality is much better. Um, increase the production of course, we recommend to do the standard side production and it means less waste also. Less manual work or, or manual forces needed, but, but they are skilled needed. And um, always when you are thinking about optimization, then you have to think about your situation. It needs some capi uh, capital and some money uh, and some time. So in which level of optimization is, is the most efficient or useful for you? And as you, as you can see, as we know, they are both in manual way, automatic way that we can really, really well support and, and there are some case studies, if, if you want, I can share them. There are, uh, for example, this uh, Marcucci, they are not that automated, but they are doing really, really good job, even if they are not automated, so they, uh, they will talk how happy they are. Um, in Boring Poo Villa shopping center, it was really tight schedule. There was old mill, and then they had to do a new shopping center there. It was really, really quick schedule. They even couldn't do the drawings, and they sent to the production only information of to this holoco production uh, information only with files, and then they produced elements and they communicated really using the visualizing. So they didn't have time for for the drawings. So drawings came later. Uh, there are quite many um, of uh, automated production, for example, Hembeton is, is for the wall balance that we automated way and, and, and uh, 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 C-Panel Thailand is, is doing also a really, really awesome job with uh, automated production. So if you are interested in more information, then come and I can share the information. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sam.